So today I'm just going to be doing a quick review on the Ideal Multimeter, the 61340. So this is the actual model itself. As you can see right here, it's got an ergonomic taper for your hand, which is a really nice feature. It's got a really large LED display, which I love. Um, the features I don't like about it physically are the fact that the LED screen and the rotary switch aren't really protected. As you can see that the cover here, the rubber cover, doesn't really extrude itself from the actual model. So if you were to drop on this plate, you're going to be hitting your rotary switch or your LED screen. In this, rotary switch is a little bit stiff, but personally I sort of like that, it's a little bit more rigid. So other than that, the only other feature I don't like about it physically is um, the fact that when you push a button while standing up on its own, is it sort of falls down. It's terrible, it's absolute shit, but what can you do? So anyways, that's enough about the physical characteristics, let's go into the actual measurement abilities. Okay, so let's just go into the measurement capabilities of this. So the first setting you can go to is AC voltage, which is not true on uh, RMS, which is first off is really annoying. The upgraded model of this one, the 61342, it's about uh, $15 more and it has the ability to read true RMS. And I don't believe it has any other like more features than that. So it's sort of, you know, why even bother to make this one? So that's the one thing I hate, but the quoted accuracy of this is 1.5% for the AC voltage, which isn't that bad. Now when we go to the DC, it's a little bit more impressive. It can measure uh, to 0.5% accuracy uh, plus five digits, which is pretty actually remarkable. I really like that feature. Um, now when we go to the next setting here, the ohms, uh, the diode continuity, and the capacitance, we get a pretty interesting thing. Now this can read up to 10 mega ohms, which is amazing. Diodes, it can do up to 2.5 voltage, uh, volts, sorry. Uh, so it doesn't work on the bigger LED matrices, but uh, on the smaller stuff it does work. Now the continuity is actually pretty quick acting if we just toggle it over. Uh, it's not, you know, loop quick or anything like that. but it's fairly quick so that's a nice little thing and now the capacitance is a really nice little feature on this guy that I use quite a bit now it's not the most accurate but it offers 3% accuracy which is pretty huge so now on the next one we have Hertz or duty cycle and you can just toggle by using this button up here that says Hertz and duty cycle well duty and this is actually pretty amazing because it can actually measure up to 10 megahertz actually, which I found was pretty quick for this little unit. And it's quoted accuracy is a little bit ridiculous. It's uh, 0.1%. So it's a very nice little detail that they threw in there. So continuing on is the Fahrenheit and Celsius, which is quoted to be accurate to 3%, which isn't bad, uh, but plus 3 degrees Celsius or plus 5 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's alright for accuracy, but uh, personally I don't think you should be using a multimeter for anything really precise for measuring temperatures. Now the one thing I do love about this uh, multimeter is it has dedicated microamps, dedicated milliamps, and dedicated amps. I find myself always using the microamps and the milliamps, but the one thing I don't like is the fact that they don't have a dedicated AC and a dedicated DC. So when you actually go to those settings, you have to toggle using your uh, select button here so we'll switch from AC to DC so other than that it's a pretty damn good meter and some of the other features that it has are pretty well standard it has a hold function but it only holds one uh, thing so you can't hold multiple forms of data which is sort of annoying you know what I mean if you could hold like 500 measurements that'd be amazing um, it does have a relevant feature so that's just amazing uh, and can't stress how much I use that the max and min measurements huge and then just set your range. So, just going over those immediate features is pretty nice. It also does have a, um, a backlight, as you can see right there. But the one thing I don't like about this is the fact that it has three LEDs on the one side, but nothing on the other. So it's not really a balanced uh, image. And the fact that it powers off with under 10 seconds. So it gets really annoying how uh, how many times you have to turn this back on. You know, you should be able just to turn it on and then turn it off, not turn it on, turn it on, turn it on. So it's an annoying little feature. So just another quick note uh, about this multimeter that I really like. 
is the battery life. Um, it's quoted in the data sheet uh, 200 hours, but to be honest with you, I think I'm far exceeding that. Uh, first off, I never use the backlight, and I always turn it off. I never use the auto power down feature. But I've had this thing for more than a year, and I use it pretty well every day. And I haven't had to replace the batteries yet. So even though it's quoted for 200 hours of life, I have seem to have gotten quite a bit more than that than what I assume. I mean, I haven't been documenting the hours, but it's a pretty damn dependable battery system. Okay, now just before we break this open and actually go into the inside of this uh, multimeter, uh, the one thing, it's sort of annoying, but it's not crucial. As you can see right here, the battery is kept underneath this rubber lining, so you have to take off this rubber to get at the battery, um, which is really annoying sometimes. I I mean, I rarely replace the battery, like I said, just 10 seconds ago, but when you're trying to get at it, it's really a hassle. But now, once you open this up inside, you get a really good look at some things. Like right here is probably my favorite feature about this multimeter is uh, the battery terminal. You know, it's not that cheap wire leads with, you know, where you click it in. It's actually you know, these pieces of metal that really hold it in. It just has that solid feeling. And as you can see here, uh, there's some real amazing overload protection uh, just these slots here to protect from the high voltages and stuff it's awesome um, it's very awesome inside I mean internally this meter looks pretty solid I mean it doesn't have any blast shields for um, if the fuses go but I mean you can't have it all for this price but as you can see the banana jacks are very solid in stature so overall this is a pretty solid meter when you break it down internally and it's all surface mount, it's very few through hole components, so once again, it just seems really well built inside. And of course it has, you know, fuses for your high amperage and your milliamps. So, at least it is fused. I mean, on some of the cheaper meters in this price range, they don't have fused amperage. They'll have fused uh, milliamps, but they won't do the amps, and which is just terrible because you can blow up your meter and actually cause damage but that's where you get that cat 3 rating from, right? So just going into the details down here at the bottom, it's uh, you have one just for measuring high current. So that's really nice. And as you can see here, it's fused for a maximum of 10 amps. And when you go here, you have your microamps and your milliamps and your Fahrenheit and degrees Celsius um, as a dedicated terminal. And then obviously your common and then everything else. So I really like the fact that these are separated it's just one of those things that make this um, from a mediocre multimeter to a really awesome multimeter. Anyways, going into the price and the details, uh, this meter comes with two test leads and a thermal probe, um, all of which are mediocre at best. They're nothing special. But once again, it's in the price, right? I mean, if you want really good leads and a good, you know, thermal probe and all this stuff, you know, buy a fluke, but you're going to spend $400. Now this meter here I found on Amazon.com for about $27 and the higher end model, um, the 342, I found for $42 and that's with true RMS. So for the money it actually turns out to be a pretty solid meter and I totally recommend just having one of these if you can only afford it in that price range. So anyways thanks for watching have yourself a great day.